The year was 1985, and plastic-sided toasters had just been introduced. The makers said they designed them to help stop people getting burned on hot metal-sided toasters. But like many other kitchen appliances in the 1980s, these could be surprisingly dangerous. I hadn't realised this, but did you know that the bread in your toaster could go up in flames? I remember this so well. I couldn't believe it when I started hearing about fires in people's kitchens. All watchdog viewers were doing was taking bread, maybe a couple of days old, a bit dry, putting it in their toaster on a, a brown setting, and then going out the room, and coming back a couple of minutes later and finding their toaster on fire. As our test showed. And look what happened, that's four and a half minutes. You can see there, the plastic's all dripping onto the work surface. Watchdog's role then was the same as it is now, to investigate your problems and encourage companies to put them right. Which they did. Within a year, heat-resistant plastic or a metal rim to separate the plastic edges from extreme heat had been developed. And it wasn't just the manufacturers who took action. The British Standards Institution was quickly on the case and improved the industry's standards. Future toasters will be able to cope with the kind of conflagration that we found out in our tests, which is excellent news. That safety standard for plastic toasters came in before they caused more problems. But it wasn't so with another kitchen appliance, the kettle. Every parent should actually look at their kitchen from a child's eye view. They should get down on the floor, have a look around. It's quite an adventure playground. Long trailing leads or flexes were causing around a thousand injuries a year to young children, scalded by the boiling hot water after pulling kettles off kitchen worktops. It was the shocking case of Michael White that first brought this to Watchdog's attention in 1985. Michael just tripped, reached up to grab something, and it just happened to be the kettle lead, which pulled it down, came down on his head and down the side of his face. A third of his body was covered in burns, an accident that could have been avoided by shortening leads or then this simple solution. Coiled kettle flexes spring back into position once you've used them. Now, these coiled flexes could save thousands of families terrible anguish, save the National Health Service millions of pounds. In the 80s, there were no rules about how long a kettle lead should be. Watchdog called for coiled flexes to stop children being scalded, but SEMA, the Industry Association for Small Electric Appliances, claimed coiled flexes would cause as many problems as they solved. Well, we did what we think they should have done in the first place. We sent copies of this document to all sorts of real experts, from the Department of Trade's Consumer Safety Unit to the British Burns Association. Now, all of them said the evidence in their document was unconvincing, spurious, irrelevant, or just plain wrong. Well, we're delighted to say that SEMA have now had a change of heart. So all kettles were to come with coiled or shorter leads. A huge success for Watchdog and for all safety campaigners. But there was also another appliance in your kitchen that desperately needed to be made safer. It would take the death of a whole family for that to happen. The tragedy happened in Wales last year. In this house, what happened during the night, fire broke out. Um, the lady who lived there, she lost her husband and five children. Six members of the family wiped out the fire. The cause of the fire, an iron with a faulty thermostat. At the time, hardly any had cutouts to stop them overheating. But after Watchdog alerted manufacturers to the dangers, they acted. Now, what they've done is they've put in thermal cutouts. This is Hoover's. This cost just 17 pence, and they've put this in their iron. So if a thermostat fails, the iron will cut out. But not all safety campaigns had such a quick resolution. For years, many appliances came without a plug. We were expected to fit them ourselves. We're not electricians, um, so trying to fit your own plug if you haven't got the skills and knowledge um, can be very dangerous. Watchdog and the Royal Society for Prevention of Accidents campaigned for fitted plugs throughout the 1980s, but still the industry resisted. That is until 1991, when young mother Julia Toole died, electrocuted because of a badly fitted plug. 
Following her death, ministers sat down with manufacturers and declared that within two years, plugs must be fitted as standard to all domestic appliances. It was a massive victory and it was a great move forward on the home safety front. It's amazing to think that just 30 years ago, the kitchen was such a dangerous place. But the manufacturers did eventually take action. They had to. Tougher standards means tougher testing. And tougher testing means that the products we all use today are actually much safer. <laughs>